Whether or not the Nuggets can even get close to replicating their 2023 success with rookies Julian Strother and Hunter Tyson, plus sophomores Christian Brown and Peyton Watson being key rotation pieces, is a conflicting concern. Question is, will this concern come in the form of detrimental growing pains internally or in the form of reinforcements delivering sheer brutality on opponents? Stay tuned for a breakdown. First, subscribe to help increase the 19.9 percentage of this channel's audience members that have already done so. Drop a thumbs up on this video and follow at DFlowHoops on Instagram. Thank you, and back to the content. Entering his rookie year, Julian Strother was rated just a 70 overall in 2K. This does put a chip on his shoulder, but also gets you thinking about if he can last in a championship defending rotation. Because last year, what Christian Brown achieved as a low-level first-round pick, and even as a first-year player in general, was a once-in-a-generation type of rarity. Brown became one of the eight greatest rookies of all time to win a championship, as only Sam Cassell, Tommy Heinsohn, Manu Ginobili, Kevin McHale, Jamal Wilkes, Bill Russell, and Magic Johnson, you could argue, were more impactful rookies to a title-winning roster than Christian. Coach Mike Malone broke down Brown's rare belief in himself after, in Game 3 of the NBA Finals, the Rook gave him 15 points off the bench in a 15-point win. Quote, We believed in him, Malone said. We drafted him, and he's everything we hoped for and more. But that confidence is from his mother, his father, his family, that I think he's had from a very early age." End quote. Giving us more insight than just that, a few rounds earlier in the conference quarterfinals against Minnesota, from a team perspective, we got a real idea of how Malone's managing of the rotation impacted Christian's success in his opening year at the pro level. With Christian, beginning of that fourth quarter, it seemed like he had a couple shaky plays. You stuck with him, and then he kind of had those couple of sequences that it felt like quieted the crowd. Just to stay with him in that stretch, a rookie in, in this environment, just is that trust that's been built up throughout the entire season in, in big moments that he has contributed in? Yeah, I mean, it, it's trust, and it's also huge for his development. I mean, you can do all the individual workouts you want, but the only way you truly develop in this league is by playing, and more importantly, Harrison, to your point, playing through mistakes. You know, if I yank Christian Brown out after a turnover. How's he going to go in there and impact the game? He's going to be looking over his shoulder after every mistake. You can't play like that. So I called a quick timeout because early in that fourth quarter, it was two turnovers, three points. Timeout. We went on, I think, a 9-2 to two run right after that, and Christian was a big part of that. So this is invaluable for Christian Brown, and I thought, to your point, Harrison, he responded, nine points, attacking the basket, finishing. It's great to see him out there doing what he's doing for us. If Mike Malone was an old-school, blame-it-on-the-young-guys type of coach like you see with so many men in charge across the association today, those two turnovers from Christian in the opening minutes of the final quarter in a playoff game could have easily been the final bit of playing time the 22-year-old Brown saw in the postseason. Skipping back ahead to the finals, following Brown's signature Game 3 performance, the media wasn't giving the Rook a lick of praise up to this point in the post-game presser, so Malone fittingly provided a shout-out to his youngin' while simultaneously throwing shade at those reporters. I have to give Christian a lot of love. I, I felt his play. What a bad press room, by the way. I felt Christian Brown's play was fantastic. Did not look like a rookie. You have to love the confidence Malone instilled in what was GM Calvin Booth's 21st overall pick in 2022's draft. Mike instilling belief in his young players last season also included asserting 2022's 30th overall pick Peyton Watson into the rotation during April. Nicknamed Swatson during his time at UCLA for his shot swatting prowess, the 6'8", 200-pound wing with a 7-foot wingspan and 33.5-inch verticals most productive month of his first pro campaign occurred when Denver was prepping their most prevalent bodies for the playoffs. Allowing the vets to get their legs underneath them for when it mattered the very most, Watson had the stamina, mental fortitude, and not to mention stay-ready aptitude to log 107 minutes over five games down the stretch of the 82-game grind. Living up to his nickname of Swatson, rookie Peyton averaged an impressive 1.6 blocks per game in April, which shockingly occurred in merely 21 minutes per game. So just imagine how impactful of a defender Watson can be, and how far of a step he can take in his development once he gets a rhythm under his belt over the course of an entire season. However, it's how Peyton both accepted his role of being a pure vocal leader who kept the locker room vibes in check once the playoffs hit, in addition to how Coach Malone and his impressive staff of assistant coaches trusted Watson to be a key piece to the puzzle in the final few games of the season, which led to he and the team's success. 
you can presume the same trust from Denver's coaching staff, which was instilled in both Swatson and CB, will be granted to both this year's 29th and 37th overall picks in Julian Strother and Hunter Tyson. We heavily broke down what they did in the Summer League in these two Nugget videos I uploaded earlier in the summer. That said, if you didn't see those uploads to quickly catch you up, over five games in Las Vegas, Strother and Tyson combined to average exactly 39 points to go along with 10.6 boards and 3.6 dimes per game. The developmental timeline for both the Nugs rookies and sophomores will be out of the ordinary in comparison to the typical expected growth of one's young talent. Don't get it twisted, there's still several reliable veteran options who provide mentorship surrounding the main core, whether it's Casey. CP, DJ, Reggie Jackson, even the maturing soon-to-be fourth-year pro Zeke Najee, or a player that was ranked heavily in my top 10 summer editions and could be heavily broken down in a future Denver upload, Justin Holiday. However, the answer to the looming question mark regarding how the 2023 NBA champions make up for the losses of fundamental staples in the 15-man unit throughout the season and playoffs being Bruce Brown, who's off to Indiana, Jeff Green, who's off to Houston, Vladko Kankar, who tore his ACL in a FIBA exhibition game, and Ish Smith, who's currently a free agent, are the rookies Strother and Tyson, plus sophomores Brown and Watson, taking on a hefty chunk of responsibility they may or may not react to adequately. On one hand, this could be concerning to the team chemistry. You never know how up-and-coming young players will blend in with the core of whom in some cases have gone through four separate playoff runs with one another, one in which resulted in achieving the ultimate glory. The Nuggets have a provably successful system, one in which their young pieces will have to continuously be adapting to, and not vice versa, something that isn't expected out of most rookies slash generally blossoming players, which makes it tougher to develop. Then there's the more optimistic, but not necessarily the more realistic reality, where said young pieces fluidly replace the likes of Bruce, Jeff, Vladko, and Ish without too many growing pains, with Julian, Hunter, Christian, and Peyton's athleticism, maturing skill, work ethic, vibrance, plus opposing scouting report unpredictability. Therefore, they could potentially act as a concerning reinforcement for the opposition. So, the title of today's video can be interpreted from several different perspectives. Either Denver's 2024 role players will have a tough time of filling the gaps left behind, or there'll be a pleasant surprise that contributes to yet another major sports championship for the state of Colorado. Which direction will Denver's bench mob proceed in? One that concerns their own troops, or their opponents? Let me know down below. This was your boy D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.